Hey there! Let's find a missing variable in a release mode application. Let me show in this video a common occurrence in WinDebug in which we cannot see the value of a local variable and sometimes when we try to step into a function the step does not work because the function is missing. This video is a continuation of my previous video so definitely check out that video first. The root cause of why the functions go missing and the variable cannot be seen is the same as the previous video which is that the release mode application has been optimized. Okay, let me switch over to Visual Studio to show some source code before we continue. On the screen, we have two files open over here. This is the function that we are going to debug, the function on do something. The function is really simple because I just want to illustrate what's going on. What's happening in the function is that there is a string object and there is an integer counter, a function call over here get counter and some string formatting. The code in get counter over here is pretty simple as well. It's just a value that is being incremented and returned. The reason this example is very very simple is that when we compile as release mode, the optimization will be very severe. Let's switch over to WinDebug and start the application. The application has nothing special about it. All it has is one button over here called do something. And what this button does is just trigger the function that we want to debug. Let me add a breakpoint to the function that we want to debug. So we just use BP to add a breakpoint and we're going to run the application. So now what will happen is that when I click the do something over here, it's going to trigger the breakpoint at the function that we want to debug. I'm going to remove the application from the view. It's going to be running behind and WinDebug is still attached, but I'm going to hide the application so that we can get a better view of WinDebug. So if we see the source code over here, we see that the lines go from C string to a variable declaration to the first line of code over here. If I switch to source mode and I step the code, I step using F10. So I step one time, I step two times, three times. You notice that the step jumps from here to here. What's going on? Now this looks pretty weird. If I run DV to look at local variables, I see that the local variables are this and str value, but counter value is missing. This is a common issue in WinDebug. It's because release mode has actually optimized this function to such a point that WinDebug cannot actually pick up the variables because they probably don't exist on the stack. Similarly, this function um, seems to be missing because we just jumped right over it. So what exactly is happening can be viewed with this assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the application and repeat the breakpoint again. But this time we're going to step through with this assembly. So let me just run the application, trigger the breakpoint again, and then we're going to switch to assembly mode and we're going to view the disassembly. The disassembly looks a bit complicated. But this part over here is just the function prolog. There are many different kinds of function prologs based on the different types of calling conventions. I am going to skip that for now because I think the calling conventions are sophisticated enough that I need to make an entire video about different kinds of calling conventions. But what we can look in this assembly over here is that we can see that local variables are actually this sub instruction over here. So how this instruction works is sub is just subtract. ESP over here is the stack pointer, extended stack pointer. E means that it's 32 bit. Stack pointers are 16 bit. So ESP would mean that it is a 32 bit stack pointer. The stack pointer is the register that holds the address of where the stack starts. By subtracting 8 from the ESP, it's making room for 8 bytes of local variables. Now, there is a complicated reason why the stack is upside down, why it needs to subtract from the ESP. I will cover that in a future video about function prologs. But for now, all functions that begin with a sub over here, this is where the local variables are being declared. So let's step through this function in assembly mode until the first call instruction over here. So if I press F10 in assembly mode, it's going to step one line at a time. 
And we notice that the source code side over here, it doesn't actually move because WinDebug doesn't actually know where the function pointer is. It's going down, it's going down. And when it reaches the first call over here, it's going into the C string. The C string is an object. So the constructor is running as this first call over here. The constructor is not that important. So let's step through the function until the next call. Observe that when we hit this line, WinDebug showed that there was a jump from here to here. What's exactly happening is that the getCounter function has been optimized away and has been inlined, meaning that the function call for getCounter has been removed and instead the assembler is directly copied into this function. So the inline function is actually this part over here. And that is why when we step through like that, we get a jump to C sample object. This function does not exist. We can check in WinDebug whether this function exists. But what's happening is WinDebug is just trying to relate that this call over here, increment, which is the plus equals, is, has been inlined and thus it has been copied over to this function over here. Now, if I step to the next call, this call over here is actually just the uh, string format, which is uh, not important as well. But we notice that because this was inlined, uh, WinDebug is drawing the uh, jump to C sample object, but that actually doesn't exist. It is actually a local variable that has been removed and a function that has been inlined. We can verify in WinDebug that the function has been inlined by just searching the symbols. Observe that the symbol for C sample objects function get counter has the string inline caller. This means that this function has been inlined. The function does exist in the symbols, but it has been inlined. So other than the symbols, it does not exist in the assembler. So what about the local variable that we could not see? Well, if we go back to the assembly, we can see that the increment was on this memory address over here, which is ESI plus D4H. The value in the brackets over here is always the address. H is just the uh, suffix for the uh, memory address. ESI is the extended source index. The companion to ESI is EDI. The assembler registers are pretty complex for how they're used, but the ESI and the EDI is used interchangeably in assembler to represent variables. So the, it's very common to see that when you have increments or decrements, these registers are being used. I will put a link in the description below on some details of the ESI and EDI registers. Now, if we look at the increment over here, we can see that the this pointer is actually in the ESI and the value is actually this address over here, which is D4. This is how the inlining happened. The variable of the this pointer for this object over here, this sample object over here was just referenced directly. And so the value was taken directly from the object. This meant that the function sample object is not important anymore we can view the value of this register by just doing dd and we can see that it is the number two now let's just run the application and see the output yes the output is counter value two which is exactly the same as this variable over here let's run the experiment uh, again so i'm gonna trigger the breakpoint again so let's just step through with assembler and step 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 all the way to the first call that is the c string then we step through to the second call over here and if we view the value of dd we get that the result is three and if we run the application we get that the result counter value is also three this all looks pretty complex but actually it's Pretty straightforward if we understand that code inlining and variable optimization um, does occur when we debug release mode. I used to debug like this every day because the application that I had could not really be built as debug mode because there were just too many dependencies that didn't work when it ran as debug mode. So I had to learn how to debug as release mode, especially optimized code. And I found that looking at the disassembly really helped me understand why stepping through functions sometimes looked bizarre. Like in the case we just had, we when we step through the function, it is in line. That's why the debugger jumps 
and local variables don't seem to appear because they're actually being referenced directly in registers. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if you had to debug this way and let me know how it went. Gentle reminder to subscribe. Hit that bell icon and give me a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.